I was born poor. Do I look poor to you? What about her? I guess it depends how we define poor. I only realized how fortunate I was growing up when I arrived to Africa for the first time. This is when I saw real poverty. At that time, I was working for a textile firm that had several factories across the continent. You see, growing up in Israel, it wasn't the same poverty. I had shoes, I had food, I had a warm bed. The children that I saw outside of the factory didn't have much. No shoes, little to no clothes. They look sick, they look malnourished. Sometimes I used to take off from work and I wanted to spend some time in the villages. I wanted to understand what is happening and I went to villages like this one. Very quickly, I realized there are two things happening. First, people were unhealthy. And second, children were not educated. So one day, I went to a nearby medical center, and this is what I saw. People waiting, people lying on beds, waiting. They look desperate. So I asked for the doctor, there was no doctor. So I asked for the nurse. The nurse came and I asked her why people are not getting treatment. And she simply said, we do not have vaccines and medicines because we do not have a fridge. And the reason why we do not have a fridge is because there is no electricity. I went back that evening, people were still waiting. At the nearby room, two women were giving birth in the dark with candles and kerosene lamps. It doesn't surprise us in case of any complication when the mothers and the babies do not survive. I went to the nearby school and here again, no electricity. Students were trying to study with candles and kerosene. So, the solution should be simple. Let's bring them electricity, right? It's not that simple. It's not about one or two villages. It's about a continent. We are talking about 54 countries, and in most of the countries, most of the population does not have access to electricity. I wasn't that educated. I didn't know much about energy, so I applied for schools, and I was accepted to Columbia University in New York. I went and got my master's in energy. The first year as a student, I realized maybe we don't need that much. Maybe only two solar panels we can bring to that medical center, and we can bring them electricity. So I went back. I raised some money from friends, not much money, and I went back. Two solar panels we installed on the roof of the medical center. We brought them electricity inside and outside, and a small fridge. Already the next day, people were coming and getting vaccination. Even a few weeks later, a doctor accepted to move to the village, because now he can take care of the people. Then we went to the nearby school and we did the same. Very simple. Only two solar panels. Two solar panels on top of the room. And we brought electricity to all of the classrooms, inside and outside. For many of the students, it was the first time they see light at night. Now, I guess it was good, right? People were getting vaccination, children were going to school, it was good. Yes, it was, but it wasn't good enough. I forgot something quite important. Small, but important. It sounds silly to you, 
but it's crucial. I forgot who is going to replace the light bulbs. And it's not about who is going to replace the light bulb, who is going to pay to replace the light bulbs. They don't have money. The students don't have money. The nurse, the teachers, can we count on the government? No. Should I fly from Israel to replace the light bulbs? Would that be quite an expensive light bulb? Wouldn't it be? So how are we going to find a way for the school and the medical center to generate money so that they can replace the light bulbs themselves? What I'm about to tell you may surprise you, and it surprised me. Believe it or not, it's true. In the villages, they do not have shoes, no food, but they have cell phones. I couldn't believe it. Where do they charge their cell phones? There is no electricity, right? So here's what I find out. Apparently, there is one guy who is collecting all of the cell phones, and he walks eight miles to another village where there is no electricity either, but they had a car. And people were using the car's battery to charge their cell phones and pay 10 cents. So then I said, maybe we find a solution. Maybe we can use the solar energy from the school and the solar energy from the medical center, and let's allow people to come, charge their phones, pay 10 cents, and that's it. Is that a good idea? We started. Here what's happened after three days. Let me tell you, they had more money than they need. So this is it. We made it. They had enough money to buy the light bulb themselves. I went to the US, raised more money. I even founded the organization. I'm still the CEO called Innovation Africa. I went back to Africa, installed more solar panels on more schools, more medical centers. It was good. I was happy. But it wasn't good enough. I made a mistake. I was wrong. And what I'm about to tell you is probably why I'm here in front of you today. One day, I went to a school where we have installed solar energy. There were only a few students, maybe 300 of them, not even 30% of the number of students that are usually at the school. So I asked the head teachers why the students are not coming to school. Where are they? And he simply told me, children are too weak to walk to school. There is famine. There is no water. And this is when I realized that maybe all along I was wrong. What's the point of installing solar energy on a school when children are too weak to walk? There is no point. All along, we were fixing the wrong problem. The root cause of the problem was water. The water. People didn't have water. This is what I saw. The reason why people were unhealthy and the children uneducated, it's because of the water. It was making them sick. We need to fix that. Now, many of you are probably saying, yes, but how can we do it? There is no water in Africa, right? Well, I find out that we were all wrong. There is plenty of water in Africa, everywhere. Where? In the aquifers, right? Right beneath their feet, there is plenty of water. Yet people were searching for water every day for hours. The water is everywhere, sometimes 20 meters deep, sometimes 200 meters deep, but there is water. What we don't have in Africa, 
is energy. What we need is energy to pump the water up. This is it. So here again, the solution quite simple. Only a few solar panels. And we started. This is what we started and we installed solar water pumping system. The first thing that we did, bringing a drilling machine. Let's drill, find the water. We find the water easily. Then only a few solar panels, a few solar panels to give the energy to the pump. The pump pumping the water up to a tank. And from the tank, through gravity, water goes to taps across the village, 10 of them. There was water all the time, everywhere. People were happy. And then an extra tank. Why? Because from Israel, I brought drip irrigation. Now that they have water, let's allow them to grow more food with less water. No more famine. Now, I was amazed by how just by bringing them water, we changed the village. The first, the children. The children were clean. They were not thirsty. Many of them were going to school, especially girls. They don't have to look for water anymore. They're not sick anymore. But really what amazed me, still does, is the entrepreneurial spirit in the village. We gave them water and they made money. We see water, the color is blue, they saw it as green. And here's some example of the businesses that they started doing. The first, selling fruit and vegetable. And yes, it makes sense. Now they have water, they're growing more food than any other village. The extra, they are selling to other villages. They were making money. The second, making bricks. Now that they have water, they can make bricks and build homes. And they were selling bricks, three cents per bricks. And then taking care of livestock, selling milk, and even some of them were open bakeries. So this is it. Just because we gave them access to water, the village, people were healthier, more educated, and financially independent. As of today, February 2016, Innovation Africa, we have installed solar energy on 104 villages, seven countries. <laughs> and we brought water and access to electricity to nearly one million people as of today. <laughs> now, we even received an award from the United Nations. And I did mention Israel a few times, and the reason why we got the award is because from Israel I bring a technology that is allowing us to monitor remotely everything that is happening we know at any time, every time, how much energy is being produced, how much consumed, how much water is being pumped. And if something breaks, we have people on the ground to fix it. It's good. It's good. But it is not good enough, is it? No. We haven't done much, right? There are still 350 million people searching for water in Africa right now. What we have done is not even a drop in the ocean. So here's what I learned from my experience. Three lessons. The first, sometimes good is not good enough. If good was good enough, we would have not found the root cause. Second, sometimes the source of the problem is also the source of the solution. If you think about it, in Africa, the sun was the problem. The sun was the one drying their land, 
making people thirsty, but it's also the sun today that is allowing people to get water, access to vaccines, and to food. And in my case, poverty was my problem. But poverty was also my solution. Because I experienced poverty, I was able to go, understand, and I was pushed to help. And the last lesson, and probably the most important, it doesn't take much to help people. It doesn't. If you think about it, I haven't done much. I didn't invent anything. I brought a solution to a problem that I recognized. Everyone can do it. It's not even expensive. And most of the time, it is simple, it is easy. You see, the reason why there is still poverty today, anger, injustices, it's not because we do not have the solution. It's because we do not take enough actions. We know what needs to be done. We just need to get it done. And whether or not you want it, in this world, we are privileged. And with privilege comes responsibility. People are waiting, people are suffering, and we cannot continue and ignore it. So please, let's stand up, take more action, and let's help those who need us. Thank you.